We begin here the first lesson on this uh, text, Viveka Chudamani, that is uh, one of the treatises of uh, Shankara, Adi Shankara or Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya was maybe the best, the biggest master, enlightened master of Hinduism of all the times. It was, it was a very classical commentator on the, a, what we call the Prasthanatraya, that are all the a, basic texts of the Vedanta. Means the main Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, you have a comment on the Bhagavad Gita, and a comment in the Brahma Sutras, or the Vedanta Sutras. <coughs> a very, very incredible uh, comment. After, after Shankara, many other big, big uh, wise masters, enlightened masters like Ramanuja, did comments on these scriptures in the Brahma Sutras, the Vedanta Sutras. But uh, half of the comments was to put um, comments against Shankara's comments. That means Shankara was a real important uh, work. And you will see that after Shankaracharya, even till our days, whoever make uh, another uh, point of view about Vedanta, uh, deal a lot with Shankara. You will pay attention. Why? Because he was a real incredible enlightened master. So it's beautiful to think about an enlightened being like Shankara, but uh, in fact he, he didn't invent something. That, because Shankara lived in a very special time, you know, was a time that the, the followers of the Vedic, the Vaidika Dharma, was a concentrate, a deal only with the Karmakanda. Karmakanda be, means all the ritual aspect of the Vedas. And uh, all the soteriologic aspect of the Veda that search for moksha and enlightenment, uh, was a little day neglected, was neglected, if not neglected at all. So appears Buddhism. And Buddhism, they reject all the Vedas, all the holy scriptures, and they was busy more with the soteriologic aspect of spiritual life. In that environment appears Shankara, and he he did something beautiful. In some way, uh, he didn't accept to throw the bath with the baby and everything together. He take, he accept the Vedic scriptures, the holy scriptures, with the Karmakanda, and he tried to explain and to expose to the people the Jnanakanda, uh, specifically the Upanishads, and all the other aspect of the Vedic wisdom. And then uh, w we can see that uh, it's beautiful that, for example, ordinary people that become religious uh, can become uh, like slaves of the scriptures because the scriptures will 
will uh, dictate everything what they do. But uh, an enlightened spiritual master doesn't mean that he throw away the scriptures, he don't need more scriptures. No, he inject life from his own transcendental experience into the scriptures. So he did so many comments about all the main Upanishads, as we say, Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sutras, and even he wrote a lot of treatises explain more and more this vision of the Advaita Vedanta, that he is the main exponent. He didn't uh, throw away his uh, tradition, his culture. He accept a spiritual master in a bona fide line, Govinda Pada. And um, he did an amazing work. This, uh, he lived in the uh, 788 till 820, the common era. But uh, don't take it exactly, because there are a lot of, uh, of course, a lot of uh, discrepancies in the dates. So <coughs> we learned the Viveka Chudamani. Viveka Chudamani is a very important treatise. It's we have a more basic treatises like Atma Bodha, Tatwa Bodha, but Viveka Chudamani is more expanded. It includes all the the Vedanta uh, vision in it. Viveka means uh, discrimination. Chuda means, uh, 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 money means jewel. Chuda means Christ. So Viveka is discrimination. Mm. We can call it the supreme jewel of discernment or, or discrimination. Uh, we talked in the past about this uh, term viveka. Viveka means uh, discrimination, means uh, separation. It's the ability to separate, to separate between elements when they are mixed together, when they are lumped together. True phenomenon, they become together, they seem to us like one. So the ability to separate between them is viveka. Speci specifically, when we talk about Viveka Chudamani, we talk about the lamp, the mix of the self and the non-self. Mm. Self and non-self seems to us one phenomenon. Uh, I am sad. I am a human being. Seems to me it's one thing. I am a human being. I am sad. I am happy. But uh, this is because our aviveka, or lack of discrimination, that we are not able to separate. I is my real nature, is the self, what I am really are, I am. This uh, is not an opinion, it's not an, a thought. It's not a thought. I don't think I exist. No? When somebody fall, yeah, sometimes somebody, uh, what I do, like this, uh, why? Because I exist, and I want to continue to exist. It's something existential, no? Some, some danger. I don't think, oh, I am here, I need to, no, I don't think about it. I know I am. I know I exist. It's, it's an existential experience. That is my real nature. I am. Human being belongs to the body. Is, is, is not the real self, is something that belongs to the body-mind complex. I am sad, I am, is the nature of the self. Sad is a mental state. I am happy. So it's the same thing. I am is the nature, your real nature, the nature of the self, Brahman, Atman. Happy is another state of mind. That same. I am this, I am, the I am never change, but sad, happy, tall, uh, 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 skinny, fat, all these things change all the time because they are temporal, they belong to the non-self, the body-mind complex. And these two things are lumped together, they become like one, mixed. Is for example, I give that example, you take a ball, a ball of metal, iron, and you put in a oven, yeah? 
and you put more temperature, more temper, more fire. In some moment, somebody, everyone who will look at it will say, "This is a ball of fire, a ball of fire." But if you, with more discrimination, with more viveka, you pay attention, you will see that there are two different elements: mm? the round shape. How do you say? Round, round shape. The round shape belongs to the iron, is the form of the metal. And the color, and the heat, belongs to the fire. So these are two different elements that are mixed together. Now, you don't need to dif differentiate physically to put apart the fire from the iron. It's enough that you see and you understand. Oh, you realize this is not a ball of fire, it's a ball of metal that acquire the, uh, the nature of the fire and the fire. These are two things together, two phenomenons together, it's not one. In the same way, it's not necessary that you uh, 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 put apart physically the non-self from the self or the body-mind complex from the self. It's enough that Vedanta reach you to certain realization. To realization, this, yeah, but this is me and this is not me. This is the self, this is not self. Yeah, you say, I, I am a father. I am is my real nature, is the nature of the self. Father is related to body-mind complex. Now, uh, we can ask, yeah, but what is the problem? What is the problem? Okay, I have no discrimination. I cannot differentiate um, what is I and what is a mental state. Hmm? All these things, when I, I am attached, well, you are, it's not you. I am is you. Attach it is a mental state. Pa come and go, come and go. So, what is the problem? Uh, look, uh, okay, I cannot discriminate. But why is it so important to develop this discrimination? Well, uh, as I am, or my real nature, is unlimited. Hmm? Uh, as we say, Vedanta, like uh, every religion of the world, say that, that God is omnipresent. God, that supreme reality, ultimate reality, is omnipresent, is everywhere. What means is omnipresent? There is no any place where, where God is not. No one place. So in some point you can understand that there is no place even very small to say I, I as something different from God. Means uh, even as uh, the Bible say, en od mi levado, en od mi levado means there is nothing else than the divine. So the conclusion of the Vedanta is only God is. It's interesting because Vedanta don't have this question like other spiritual ways that say, if there exists a God, there is a God, or there is not a God, there are many gods. No, the, the, if the God exists or not. Vedanta say, only God is. Only God is. So, a, your real nature is divine, because there is no other nature. Your real nature is divine, is unlimited. And these opinions that we have about ourselves, because we are self-conscious, we are not like animals. An animal is not self-conscious. A dog is not conscious that he is a dog. A cat don't know that he is a cat. We are conscious of ourselves. And because we have opinions about everything that we are conscious, hmm? when we know a car, oh, we have opinion about the car. When we see a city, we have opinions about the city. When we see a person, we have opinions about the person. Somebody say something, we have opinions about what everything. Of course, we are conscious of ourselves. So we have opinions about ourselves. With these opinions, we create an image, as we exclaimed there. Yeah, but we have opinions. And these opinions, no matter what, they are a means of limitation, a tool of limitation. They go and limit us. Any opinion that you, you have about yourself limit you.
everything. If you say even positive things, of course negative things, but positive things, even if you say, you know, I am intelligent. If you say I am stupid, of course you are limited. <laughs> If you say, I am, uh, I am uh, ugly, okay, that is a limitation. But even if you say, I am beautiful, you are beautiful, but there is always somebody more beautiful than you. So it's limited. And you will be not beautiful in the future, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and in the past, you was not the most beautiful. So it's not unlimited beautiful. Same thing if you say, uh, okay, I am intelligent, I, I am scholar. Yeah, you're a scholar, but always there is more, somebody more intelligent than you. And in the future, maybe, will be somebody. Not, not, you are not omniscient. Or, uh, I am rich. You want to be rich. You can be rich, but you, are not, you don't have all the richness of the universe. So, all these opinions, no matter what, they are limitations. And in one way or other, they give you, they say, what you think that you are, give you an experience of limitation. And if you see you look around, if you look at yourself, every human being go with a deep, deep sadness, a deep discomfort, a deep uh, frustration, because we feel limited. We have this uh, opinion about ourselves, this idea about ourselves that we are limited. And if you look around, every single person in the world that we told yesterday, nobody's happy here, nobody's happy there. Yeah, nobody's happy. Why? Because if you look at everyone, it's not that people want different things. It's not that one person wants uh, a lot of clothes, another one wants a lot of cars, another one wants a lot of money, a lot of beauty. No. Every single human being wants to experience no limitations, to be free from limitations. This is what everyone, everybody wants a big room. But a big room, everyone. People have even a palace, and what bigger palace, another palace. It's not that you want a little more money or more money. Even after 10 millions, you want the million 11. Why? Because you believe that another house, another million will liberate you from this feeling of limitation. You believe that I, 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 some from somewhere, somebody, something will be, give me this liberation, moksha, but from limitation. Is the other coupleship? Is the other this coupleship? This million of dollar? This uh, room? This place? This somewhere? And everybody, everybody search for for the element or something that will give me the liberation from limitation. We feel limited. And we, un we know existential, we experience that this is not my nature. That originally I am not limited. I can accept that others are limited, but I cannot accept that I am limited. Nobody, nobody, even the most, you see people, so good people and they're, yeah, but deep inside, they, they, don't, they are frustrated. And don't think, I if I live in this city, I will go to that city, and I feel free from limitation. <laughs> no, even if you change your husband, your wife, your house, your city, your place, the, the feeling of limitation will go with you. Go and ask, ask people, call people. You have some parent that is millionaire, no matter what, that ask, tell me about the truth. The truth. There is this frustration somewhere. They think, no, the next million I will be. The, the, the only if, if this change I will feel. Because we believe that in the next uh, situation I will experience this uh, unlimit unlimited. So this is the problem with this opinion. In discrimination, with the separation, I can separate and understand. No. This is the beautiful of Vedanta. Vedanta don't try to bring you a system that you are limited and you will reach uh, uh, the unlimited. It's not like <laughs> what you, you think you need another million dollars to feel unlimited. You think you need another couple. You need you think to change city and you will be, no, no. You need to accept our religion and then you will be unlimited. That is not the way of the Vedanta. 
the way of the Vedanta say, no, you don't need something. You don't need nothing because you are already unlimited. You are unlimited. You only need to pay attention because the, the sense of limitation come from your opinion, from your ignorance. From your you need to look, see. And this is what we do here, to remove the ignorance and to look in ourselves. And the realization is that I am already unlimited. I don't need nothing. Originally, I am unlimited. I can enjoy. I can only enjoy the self, totally unlimited. I don't need nothing. Everything is perfect. Is, is, is only Vedanta says, stop to run after this religion will change the, the, the situation. That million dollar will change the situation. This person will change the situation. The house, the car. No, no, nothing will change the situation. Because the situation, as Vedanta say, you are the problem, but you are the solution. The problem is you because you are concepts and your ideas and your opinions that you superimpose on yourself. But you are the solution because you are what you search for. Your real nature, your reality, your authenticity is totally unlimited. How I am unlimited? Try to what you want. You, you want a coupleship? Yourself is like unlimited love and coupleships. Yeah. You want clothes? Your real self is like an infinite clothes, infinite money, infinite uh, uh, whatever you want, infinite beauty, infinite uh, happiness, inf absolute happiness, abs you understand? unlimited. If this is what you want. This is what we want. In reality, the seeker for truth is the most ambitious person. He wants freedom, total, not freedom of a weekend or freedom of, of to go out of some place. It's, it's total freedom from yourself, from your opinions about yourself, from these opinions of limitation. So, um, this is the way of Viveka Chudamani, and we will begin with, um, with the Mangala Charana. Mangala Charana is not the first verse, but Mangala Charana is, Mangala Charana is invocation. Uh, in Hinduism, every single spiritual text have an invocation, or a Mangala Charana means it's worthy to be studied, to be read. It. Not every book is worthy to, to be read, it, to be studied, to invest your time. Time is uh, very is valuable. Time, you know, is the most valuable thing, energy. And uh, there is a lot of books in the world, you know. A lot of people who don't know what they are, they are addicted to cigarettes, to alcohol, meat eaters, and whatever, and they don't know who they are, totally ignorant about themselves, and they wrote books. So we need to be very cautious not to waste our time in, in, in paper that the, the only influence they have in the world is to cut a lot of forest, nothing else. So for that there is a Mangala Charana. In the Mangala Charana we see if this is a person of a high level, of consciousness, or is uh, another ignorant like me? So, both of uh, you write maybe beautiful things, but they are everything is an invention of his own mind, his own ego, nothing really bona fide. So, the Mangala Charana presents the, the attitude of the writer, or, um, of the author. And this is the Mangala Charana of Viveka Churamani. Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tama Gocharam Gocharam Tama Gocharam Govindam Paramanandam Govindam Paramanandam Sadgurum Pranatos Miaham Okay. <coughs> Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gochara Tama Gochara Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta is the, the last conclusion of the Vedanta. As Vedanta is the last conclusion 
of the Vedas. Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta is the, the last conclusion, Siddhanta, last portion, last conclusion of the Vedanta. You need to understand the, the, the strong um, uh, sentence, the strong, what, what this say is very strong. Because if we have the Vedas, the Vedic revelation, mm, that is so central in all the Sanatana Dharma, we say, we talk about the, the conclusion of all the Vedic revelation, these are the Upanishads. This is the, 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 the everything is for that conclusion, Jnanakanda. Now with all the Upanishads, what can be the Vedanta Siddhanta, the conclusion of the Vedanta? This is not an, a logical conclusion. It's not another argument. It's not another book. It's an existential conclusion. Because all the Mangala Charana is around Govinda. Everything is around Govinda. So the conclusion is Govinda. The conclusion is Govinda. So what is Govinda? First of all, say, Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gochara. Means... Uh, Gocharam, go is uh, senses or cows. Charam, go charam is um, what is um, accessible, accessible, accessible to the senses, to the, we can know it. But Sarva Vedanta Siddha, through the last conclusion of the Vedanta, Govinda is accessible through the last conclusion of the Vedanta. Means the last conclusion of the Vedanta is Govinda. Tama hmm? Gocharam is, is not accessible. That means Govinda is not accessible, the Atman, Brahman, through the senses. You know, this is, uh, Go is cows or senses. Gocharam is these uh, places that are only to grow the cows. You cannot build houses there. You cannot do nothing. These are only for cows. You can bring the cows there to eat. So you can imagine the cows go and look the place. The cows go like senses in this world that is gocharam, go after the green uh, uh, grass, only after the grass, and they don't think about nothing. In the Bhagavata Purana, we know all these uh, beautiful pastimes of Lord Krishna. When we call Lord Krishna, there is called Govindam. He's a cower boy, and he goes with the cows, and the cows go, you can imagine, yeah? But they cannot look at Govinda. Govinda go with them, play the flute, and the cows are busy with the green grass. Same thing in this world. The senses go after the green grass of Gocharam. This world is Gocharam, and they don't look at Govinda, the self that is in the beh behind them. So... This is Gocharam, Tama Gocharam. Govinda, the self, Atman, Brahman, can be perceived, can be achieved through Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta. It's the conclusion of the Vedanta. That is an existential conclusion. What is that conclusion? Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmasmi. This is the conclusion. The conclusion of Vedanta, because Vedanta, as we say, is more a doubt than a belief, than a faith. It's a doubt about who you are. Who am I? I really exist or not? And, and you know, the, the conclusion is, the re is a realization. A realization. That in the, there is the ocean, there are waves, there are bubbles, but at the end, everything is water. There is only one nature. Beyond all this world of names and forms, there are only one divine nature, that is Brahman, Govinda. Only one. So every one of us, in essentially, are Brahman. That is the, the, the conclusion of the Vedanta, to experience it, and not to know it, to experience it. And then you can really uh, perceive Govinda. What is Govinda? Govinda... Paramananda. What is Govinda? Govinda, Go is cows, Go is senses, Go is speech. Speech. Mm? Vindam is that is accessible, that is um, 
um, a, can be rich, hmm? can be known, hmm? known. So Govinda is that one that can be known. Go is speech. What is speech? Is Shruti. What is Shruti? Hearing. So what is speech? The Vedic revelation. The Vedic revelation is speech because Shruti is hearing. So that one that can be achieved through the Vedas. Remember in the Bhagavad Gita there is the 15th chapter, 15th verse. I am the one who, who should be known through the Vedas. I am the one to be known through the Vedas. Govindam, the one who can be achieved, who can read through the Vedas. But what means Krishna with I? You know, when when Mature people talk, a conversation, and sometimes children hear. Children can interpret things in, in, in a children's way, you know. When they hear, for example, that um, to be peaceful is like to be like a, like a dove. To be, to be peaceful, the children can heal. To be peaceful is to be like a dove. You think, ah, you need to be a dove, you know. To be. Because, same thing, you know? the, the word I... It's a lot of problems, the word I, because most of the spiritual life is uh, to search after your real nature, what you really are. So a person like uh, Jesus, when he, he say I, is not the same like when an ordinary person say, I want to sleep, or I want to see television. It means to his body, his mind, a body-mind complex, what he think is, is very different from when Lord Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and life. I mean, what he means? He doesn't mean his body is the way or his name. Uh, and, and there are people who can interpret. Ah, he, he say he, his body is the way, his mind, his ego. No. In that level of consciousness, like Lord Jesus, when he say I, he means Brahman. Aham Brahmasmi. I am the whole. Same thing with Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita when he say, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo, I am the source of all material and spiritual worlds. It doesn't mean this body, this form, this name is the source. He say, I am, but in a very high level of consciousness. Same thing when Krishna say, I am to be known through the Vedas, Govindam, he means his real nature, the I, the self, the self can be known through the Vedas. Is the thing that should be known through the Vedas. The Vedas are in order to know what you really are. Mm. And Swadhyaya, the study of the scriptures, is to study yourself. This is another, another uh, uh, translation of the word Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya, study of the scriptures. is the study of your real name, of you, yourself. So, Govinda mm, is, is your real nature. But in this Mangala Charana, Shankara give, uh, you can understand in two different ways. Because, uh, you know, Shankara was a poet. And if you see most, most of the holy scriptures all over the world, you need to read like poem. This is the real way to understand holy scriptures. Yeah? Like a poem, not like books of laws or something like that. If not, you can miss everything. Shankara was a poet. And as a poet, he put in such a way that you can really understand that you talk about Govinda, the real God, and Govinda, his guru. Both of them in the same time. Yeah? So, he say, Govinda Paramanandam. Govinda, the self, is Paramanandam. The real thing that you search for is enlightenment, moksha. You know, a person can say, I don't want enlightenment. I, I want whiskey. Yeah, I don't want moksha. I don't want to be samadhi. I want a steak. No, he say here, Shankara say, but Govinda is Paramananda, absolute bliss. This is something else. You want happiness to your television, your steak, your thing. You want happiness. Govinda is supreme happiness, absolute happiness. Because that is what we really want. 
When you say enlightenment is something, yeah, but who wants enlightenment? What is enlightenment? Govindam is Paramanandam, absolute bliss. It's not that kind of a joy or satisfaction that is uh, another aspect of your misery. It's not that uh, a, a satisfaction that is uh, the counterpart, the duality with the suffering. Hmm? Like, uh, uh, how is that verse of uh, uh, Matras uh, Matras parshas to counteya, the duality of the the happiness and the distress that you need. This is not that kind of happiness. In the, in relative happiness, this is paramanandam. Is ananda that is absolute, transcendental, with no other side, no no suffering, absolute happiness, bliss. Bliss. Many people think they come to spiritual life and they say, "Okay, you know, uh, I am happy. I am ready to go beyond misery and suffering, but I am not ready to to to, drip, to drop the satisfaction of the senses and the joy of the. No, you need to drop everything, all the duality, to reach the real bliss, Paramananda. That is Govinda." It's not that Govinda give you Paramananda, he is Paramananda. The moment you experience it, it's Paramananda. And at the end, you know, uh, Shankara gave us uh, the attitude, the right attitude to learn Vedanta. Sad Guru Pranatas Myaham. There is an, uh, a right attitude to learn, that is to be prostrated in front of the Guru. You need to this this prostration because uh, the the Vedanta is not only a question of study; it's a question of revelation. It, it's not that if you study more, you will understand more. You need not only that; you need to study, of course, but you need the the revelation happens in your heart, and uh, that is a grace. It's a grace from God. Guru Kripa, a grace from Guru, a grace from the Shastras. And for that, you need to, to approach the scriptures with this attitude of being prostrated in front of the Guru. The last verse of the uh, Shvetashvatara Upanishads, it talks about this, uh, uh, the revelation. The revelation that uh, happens in the heart of the person who has the same faith that he has for, uh, for God to the to his guru. So it's a question of revelation. And uh, you know, other thing in this Mangala Charana, like in every Mangala Charana, we have these um, uh, four prerequisites that every single spiritual book that we read uh, need to have this uh, Anubanda Chatustaya. Anubanda Chatustaya. This means four prerequisites that uh, or requisites that uh, should be in every book that this book be, will be worthy to be studied hmm? the first is vishaya that is the subject the subject should be worthy here the subject is brahman the second is a uh, sambanda sambanda is the connection between all the work and the subject that is knowledge. The third is prayojana. Prayojana is um, what will be the, um, what I will receive, what is the main thing that I will receive from this study, Wh what will be the, the benefit. Paramananda, this is the benefit. Supreme bliss, transcendental bliss. And the, the fourth is uh, sadaka. Sadaka means for wit. Which kind of a uh, disciple is recommended the text? There are, you know, like, a, for example, when you buy a book, you see in a store, this book is for children between five and seven, this book is for children, you know, same thing, sadaka, what level of sadakas? And here is, we see this uh, sadgurum pranatos myaham, for the sadakas that uh, are able to be prostrate with reverence in front of the Guru, 
This is the kind of sadhakas that can reach Vedanta and this book. And then we have all the prerequisites or the requisite that we need in order to, to come to this book. You know, uh, uh, the interesting thing is that, uh, as I say before, Shankara put, uh, as a big poet, he put in such a way the, the Mangala Charana that you can understand everything in relation to his guru. He's so, so expert poet. Uh, for example, Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tamagocharam. You can understand the guru not through the senses. You cannot recognize a guru through your mind, through your thinking, through your eyes, because you don't know who is a master or an enlightened master. What is an enlightened, how an enlightened master, you can look and see, oh yeah, this is or is not, it's impossible. But only to Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta, through the, the, the last conclusion of the Vedanta, you are able to recognize Govinda, the spiritual master. Govinda Paramananda, yeah, my master is Paramananda, is transcendental. He is not that he is happy from something. He, Usually, when we are happy, happy, you ask what happens that you are so happy. Something added to your life. S you had something to yourself, you know, a person, a car, money, clothes, something, and then you are happy of something. But my guru is Paramananda, he is happiness. He realized in itself, in his real nature, he realized that he is transcendental bliss. So he is bliss. To such a sadguru pranatos myaham, I remain prostrated. So you can understand the Mangala Charana in two different ways.